from Nine in Your Side Sports. This is Friday Football Frenzy. Come on in, we don't bite. At least we haven't been accused of that in the past. It's the high school Friday football frenzy. The Greater Cincinnati schedule hit the halfway point tonight. That meant conference play and games that carry a lot more meaning. No game was more meaningful than the one that took place at Rutgers Stadium in Lachlan. Mark Keenan Singleton was there as Moeller took on St. X. John Rodenberg and Miles McBride out to prove they're second to none in the GCL South. McBride in the shotgun. Swings it out quickly to Jack McCracken. And Jack is gone in a flash. 28 yards for the score. 7-0 Moeller. The Crusaders would have the lead for all about 15 seconds when disaster strikes in the form of Jared Kramer. He takes the ensuing kickoff 95 yards to tie this game. Seven apiece with 7.20 to go in the first quarter. His birth certificate says Chase Wolf. But I call him Chase Bank because he's always on the money. Look at this pass out to the flat to Cam Speck, who runs over a couple of Moeller defenders before he's tackled in the red zone. And there's peace in the animal kingdom tonight. Wolf to Matthew Fox for the eight yard score. 14 7 Bombers. Moeller driving with the chance to tie this game when Colin Thurman is stripped. The ball pokes around on the ground for a little bit before Jonathan Gretz recovers it for the Bombers. Wolf with the QB keeper makes it a 27 St. X lead. A strong defense and heady quarterback play by Wolf gives the Bombers a 37 win. And before all week long, we kept looking at all their weapons and we're banging our head into a wall trying to figure out the best way to try to defend them. Um, they're talented, but I thought our defense played well. I thought we had great field position tonight. Uh, we got to clean a few things up, but, but overall, I'm awful proud of the kids. We're in a pretty good place right now. Mm. Hey, Boy, I'll tell you what, I didn't expect that one, did no, you? No, I did not. I, I thought, of, and Miles McBride was, was injured in that game. We hope it's not anything serious, but that was a mitigating factor for Moeller, too. Another powerhouse in the GCL South has a Saturday game. Elder welcomes in Cleveland St. Ignatius to the pit. Kickoff Saturday is 2 o'clock. Yeah, and meanwhile, the LaSalle Lancers were playing out of conference, but within its same division. LaSalle is Ohio's top-ranked team in Division II. Winton Woods is ranked number four, and here we go. The frenzy was at LaSalle High School tonight, watching those Winton Woods Warriors try to start their season 5-0. and Maybe it was the humidity. Chances are it was Winton Woods because LaSalle was not in sync. It's a heist. This is Winton Woods, Christopher Oates with the pick. No points came from it. But let's go deeper into that third quarter. Winton Woods quarterback Kenny Mayberry is picked off as well. LaSalle's Sam Hildebrand gets the ball and then will pay the price. Oh. And then later, Griffin Merritt will find Josh Wiley, 26-yard hookup. It's the Lancers who go up 7-0. But this would be Winton Woods' night. The Warriors go on the road and they get a tough road win. 18-15. 18-15 was the final in this game. Winton Woods is now 5-0. Ken, we got to a couple of games in the GMC tonight. First, Oak Hills at Lakota East. Thunderhawks at 3-1. Highlanders looking for their first win. Jack Dabrowski of Lakota East gets the ball near midfield. There's a big hole waiting for him. Sizable yardage all the way down to the 10. Fans like what they were seeing. They moved it forward to the one yard line. Easy run from there for Dabrowski. Lakota East on the board first. Later in the first half, Lakota East trying to add some more points. But oh, they fumble the football away. Oak Hills makes the recovery. Oak Hills quarterback Jacob Wojcik then passes to Kevin Hopkins. Nice diving catch. Highlanders manage to advance the ball to the 10. Aaron Frick takes it in for the score. But it's Lakota East with a 42-28 win. They're now 4-1. and one. What say we head on over to Princeton High School for the Vikings and Fairfield Indians? This has been a nice combination for the Indians so far this season. Quarterback Jeff Tyus to wide receiver Juton McLean. And the band played on. More Fairfield from the 15. Tamar, uh, Tamar Boykin takes it into the end zone, and the Indians were rolling now. Second half, Fairfield in the red zone again. It's Boykins again that gets the ball again, and he's into the end zone for an easy touchdown. And then watch the ensuing kickoff. Princeton's Cecil Singleton will field that ball near his own 15-yard line. He's got a running lane, and he takes it deep into Fairfield territory, but the Vikings simply couldn't manage a point on this night. Fairfield with the shutout win. 27 to nothing is the final.
Okay, that gets us started on this muggy Friday night. We were at several more games tonight in Ohio. We're also going to take you to northern Kentucky and Indiana. Batesville Bulldogs visiting Lawrenceburg. Highlights of that game and much more when the frenzy continues.